Uh, my name is Noah Anderson. I'm professor, uh, assistant professor here at University of Wisconsin Bear Moosock County. Um, I teach anatomy and physiology, heredity, um, animal behavior, uh, and zoology. You have every day get a little bit of grading done, get uh, class prep. I'm always doing something new in my classes, so I'll spend quite a bit of time uh, developing course materials that'll be used in the classes, whether it's like a case study for my anatomy and physiology class or trying to find uh, some more detailed examples of animal behavior that I can use in my behavior classes. We're not as we're not nearly as sort of structured um, with our uh, you know like when you're in high school you actually have a specific curriculum that the instructor has to get through and regardless of whether people are getting it or not they just they've got to get through that that's their mandate by the state um, <clears throat> we're a little more flexible in terms of our curriculum so we can take a little bit more time or at least I take a little bit more time with my students if they're if they're need to get caught up on one particular aspect we can spend some time on that um, and the other thing that's different is um, the expectations are really higher so like anatomy and physiology in particular I'll have a lot of students have taken that class and they'll think of it as a class for primarily memorization you go in you learn like the biceps you learn the triceps you learn the quadriceps femoris muscles um, I teach the class from a totally different perspective it's an exercise in critical thinking you're going to be having uh, you know, working in the health professions, presumably, if you're taking anatomy and physiology. At some point in time in your life, you may have, you know, somebody's life in your hands, so you need to be able to think quickly and on your feet, and anatomy and physiology is the first step in getting us there. When I was a kid, uh, I was really inter interested in snakes, reptiles, turtles, <coughs> amphibians, these sorts of things, creepy crawlies. Once I got to college, I found out I couldn't specialize in herpetology. That's the study of reptiles and amphibians. I had to become more broad. I wanted to go straight into herpetology, and I think a lot of students kind of have the same syndrome. They want to go straight into, like, their particular niche. Um, and an undergraduate degree is really more about making you sure you're well trained for a broad field so that when you get out, <coughs> you can think for, you know, you can think. You might be exposed to a variety of different things. So in my particular instance, I um, was really interested in reptiles and amphibians. Got to college, realized that I couldn't specialize in herpetology, so I went with zoology, which is more of this broader study of animals. Took a bunch of classes there, comparative anatomy, um, comparative physiology, um, in addition to like all the regular liberal arts, languages, Greek philosophy, these sorts of things, and found out that <clears throat> not only was I kind of interested in the biology of reptiles and amphibians, I started to really get interested in comparative anatomy. Yeah, I'll have students come in <coughs> and they'll be taking uh, like uh, like an, a heredity class which deals with biology of genetics <coughs> and they're not really sure, what, you know, they have to take it, it's a general requirement for their, they have to have a, a science class. And uh, so, you know, about halfway through the semester I assign them a project where they have to go in and research a particular aspect of this of this biology and uh, and some students have gone in and actually researched their family histories of diseases and turns out that they <clears throat> not only because they have a, an investment because of their their family but they also um, find out that in the process of looking into this that you know the whole genetic phenomenon is really fascinating and they <clears throat> you know they end up saying it's like can I take any more genetics classes at Boo Yu and it's like well we don't have any more here but once you get on to lacrosse or Madison they'll they'll definitely have advanced genetics classes you can take same thing with anatomy and physiology <clears throat> I have a student in anatomy and physiology that was my student last year she did pretty well and she's my tutor in the cl for the class this year and uh, she recently commented to me that she had told a, a current student in the class that she was tutoring that she really missed anatomy and physiology <laughs> and that student was like you've got to be kidding <laughs> so yeah I have they uh, <clears throat> after you go through it even though it might be really tough and rigorous oftentimes those are the classes that students appreciate the most
I think the best part of the job here, um, I would have to say, is interacting with the students. I really like being on a small campus where I get to know my students' names on a first name basis. Um, you know, my largest class is 38, my smallest class is 15. So I really have a great opportunity to get to know these students one on one and, and help them one on one that I just wouldn't have at most universities.